The time has arrived. The new Into the Inkland cards are now in Pixelborn and in Dreamborn Ink. The deck list you see on screen here is also linked in the description. But in this video, I want to take a quick look at the much anticipated Amethyst Steel deck list that uses the Jafar Striking Illusionist, the new legendary coming out in Into the Inklands for Amethyst. And we're going to see, is it what it's hyped up to be? Is it going to combo well with friends on the other side? A whole new world, the Maleficence, the Merlin Rabbits, the Bounce stuff, etc. There's going to be a number of different ways to play it. In this video, though, we're going to take a quick breakdown of the deck list and then get into one match where you'll just see how powerful this deck can be. So to start things off, we're still utilizing the Merlin Min packages, so there should be no explanation there. You know we play a number of one drops, eight in total, or sorry, seven in total in the one three stat line. We play four of the Madam Mim, and I'm opting for four of the small Jafar Royal Vizier because I think this is probably your best bet for Jafar. Far, despite it only having two toughness it is the most practical since it is a three strength stat line and of course it's shiftable for the big Jafar. I'm also opting to test out two of the uh, new three drop Jafar that lets you look at the top two put one on top of your deck one on the bottom. I don't know if this is going to be good or not it does quest for two but again because it is a two two stat line for three it's probably a little underwhelming and you might want to go with the beefier four drop Jafar. The only reason I think that you might not want to max out on the four drop Jafar is because there are other good things that you want to play on turn four like goat or rabbit um, or even the new spell or action and then along came Zeus. Uh, but moving on in the three drop slot we still play four Mim Fox, three Maleficent which you could make an argument to play this at four now since you want more draw, three Benja for that item removal which I think will become more critical so you might even want to play four Benja. And then of course, four Goat, four Rabbit. Only two of the Jafar Dreadnought. Like I said though, you can opt to up this to three or four maybe. And then of course, we still have to play four Tinkerbell. This card is still very relevant and helps you stabilize against the aggro matchups. And then of course, the big boss of the deck is going to be the Jafar Striking Illusionist. This card will shift onto any of the small Jafars and then be immediately usable to exert either by questing or singing a song. And any draw you get while this card is exerted will net you a lore. We also opt to include three Smash and three and then along came Zeus, so not using Grab Your Swords in this build, which is probably controversial. I just wanted to test out the Zeus card first, um, and then four friends on the other side, of course, and four A Whole New World. I was thinking about fitting in more of the Queen's Castle, but I can only really fit in two copies, but this is another four drop, so again, one of the reasons why you might not want to play too many Jafar Roy, um, Dreadnoughts, because on turn four when this drops, you're also gaining two lore off of this if it goes unanswered, and anything you move to it at the start of your turn will net you draws. Keep in mind though that uh, the Jafar will not be exerted, I believe, when the location triggers, so therefore you won't get the additional lore gain off of the Queen's Castle, but it's still a good draw spell. So you may want to opt to include that or not, I don't know, you can test it out and see. There's still a lot of testing to be done here. So again, uh, before we get into the match, if you do want to see more gameplay of all the new cards, make sure you are subscribed and you check out my videos because, yeah, I'll, I think I'll be posting quite a bit uh, with this new set since I have three boxes coming in real life. Anyways, um, to round it off, we've got 50 inkable cards and only 10 on inkables. The 10 on inkables being the Zeus, uh, then along came Zeus song, a whole new world, and three Merlin rabbit as well. So the deck is very playable. You shouldn't have any problems bricking. And of course, you just want to get that whole new world off and refill your hand with the Jafar. So let's jump into a match and see how the deck performs. All right, in this matchup, we are going up against an Amber Amethyst, most likely aggro deck, and it'll be interesting to see what my opponent is on with the new set three into the Inkland cards. As you can see, our opening hand here looks pretty good. We've got the one drop Olaf, the two drop Madame M Snake. We're gonna put back one of the Jafar since we have two. Um, of the Striking Illusionist and our Tinkerbell so we can draw it a little bit later and we draw into the whole new world so we have full combo in hand if our cards can survive um, which is really interesting um, so that three drop Jafar is going to be coming in handy if it was a four drop Jafar it could also still work right now but again if we draw into rabbits or goats we may want to opt to play those as well um, but yeah let's see what's going to happen here the opponent is on the play which is very strong for aggro of course they're going to start off by inking a rock star and dropping a pluto so one of the new cards that is basically a lantern on legs you exert it to pay one less for the next character you play that turn um, and it is a good ship target for the big new bodyguard pluto we're of course going to ink one of our snakes since we drew a third one there and drop an olaf and the opponent is thinking what to do. They're going to ink a goat and probably drop an aggro threat in the Pinocchio um, because, or uh, yeah, they have the they have the Pluto and they probably know that on what I have like in this color combination, 
I wouldn't be able to take out the Pluto because it has two toughness, despite it having zero strength. So the Pluto would be safe to exert here. Um, but on turn three, I do they, they do run the risk of me dropping a Madame Mim Fox. Uh, but yeah, they do end up dropping a Pinocchio, and we're going to go ahead and drop a Mim Snake after we quest with our Olaf. So this matchup is a little tough, right? Because we're, we might be a little slow to get started and not playing the uh, the grab your swords as you saw on the deck list is going to hurt you against aggro for sure. Um, the opponent quests with the Pinocchio, drops a snake, and then inks a friend. What's interesting here is they could have exerted the Pluto here and then dropped the re -drop the Pinocchio if they wanted, but they didn't do it because they obviously feared that I would just take out the Pluto for free with my Mim Snake. So we end up drawing a rabbit, which is really strong here, um, but we're going to opt to establish Jafar on turn three, which will allow us to scry... Um, to look at the top two basically and we're gonna grab the Zeus song so if this would have been a grab your swords um, instead of the Zeus song it also would have been pretty strong to take out the aggro threats because we could shift Jafar on five sing the grab your swords and then next turn always sing the whole new world right so you don't always have to rush things out all, all the time uh, we're gonna opt to quest here knowing that my opponent is likely gonna trade their mim snake but that's okay and they're keeping their pluto because clearly they want to use it on the shift with the bodyguard pluto which is very strong it's gonna protect your aggro threats like it's insane like it's a, it's a eight willpower body like it takes a lot to get over um but yeah as expected the opponent's going to trade in there and uh, I'm just trying to basically prevent them from questing. So anything I can take that stops them from questing, like if they want to challenge my stuff, I'm okay with that. They establish a location, the Queen's Castle. So they're also on that new location stuff. We know they have a Pinocchio in hand. Um, they're going to gain two lore off of this at the start of their turn. And anything that's on that location will also gain the benefit of drawing them a card uh, or the opponent will. So we're going to end up inking a friend on the other side because we plan on singing a whole new world here. Um, and so you, uh, like the friends on the other side and whole new world do conflict with each other a little bit, but I'll explain that a little bit later when you see kind of the combo that we're able to pull off. Uh, I'm going to use the Jafar to crash into the location though, and then use the Zeus song to take it out. So the opponent does not gain the two lore and cannot establish some characters there to draw at the start of their next turn. Um, and yeah, Pixelborn is a little glitch right now. If you notice, it says that this Jafar has evasive, but it shouldn't. In this instance, it ends up not mattering though. Um, it would only matter if the opponent had like a Mim Snake or something that they could have uh, used with the Pluto to take out my Jafar right away. Uh, but you're going to see here they don't. They have two Pinocchios. Um, so, and they ink the Mim Snake, or sorry, Mim Fox, not Snake, Fox with, with Rush. Um, speaking of which, that's what we draw for turn. And now we're on the turn five. The opponent probably anticipates that we have the Jafar whole new world combo. That's why they dumped their hand there. Um, we're going to ink the Mim Fox, shift the Jafar, of course. And I think this is another small bug in the game um, where I, I have to activate the, the small Jafar's effect again. So it ends up not making a difference, but these are just small little glitches. Um, and then we're going to, of course, sing a whole new world, losing a rabbit, which is unfortunate, and a, and a snake. Um, so you can kind of see there's a little bit of anti-synergy with this package, with this uh, combination. So, you know, will the Merlin Mim packages still be relevant? Um, I think they still will be, because you're going to see how we're going to be able to um, utilize them with this Jafar now that it's on board. So the opponent's got a fresh grip, and we just gained seven lore. Um, or not, yeah, seven, seven lore, I think, there. Uh, and the opponent does have seven lore on board themselves, so they can easily get back up to ten. Um, they're going to end up questing with both of these Pinocchios, and we do have a Tinkerbell in hand, thankfully, um, to deal with this, because the odds that the opponent has a shift Pluto now is pretty high. Speaking of which, there it is, dropping down with that big eight willpower. And Steel, as you probably know, has a hard time dealing with big bodies. The Zeus song does help with that. It deals 5 damage to target location or character. It does solve a big deficiency with Steel, which is why I'm testing it out here. The opponent also establishes a Lilo, and I'm like, alright, this is totally fine, because you know we're going to drop that Tinkerbell. I'm opting to keep Benja just in case the opponent does have some like interesting items that they might want to drop, and I'm really not feeling this this three drop Jafar, so I'm going to ink that and then drop the Tinkerbell to instantly wipe out all of the aggro threats here, and we still have our own Jafar on board. Now, what I can do with this setup here is next turn, throw eight damage into that Pluto to take it out if it quests again, um, because I have four on Jafar and four on the Tinkerbell, and then if the Tinkerbell takes out the Pluto, I'll be able to deal two damage to something else. So the opponent is probably in a little bit of a rough spot here, because um, whatever aggro threats they establish will be taken out by the um, Tinkerbell dealing two damage to it after it takes out the Pluto. Because if the Pluto quests, it'll have, it has bodyguard, right? So... Uh, 
you know, I can, I have to take that out anyways. Um, but yeah, the opponent's in an interesting spot here. Let's see what they opt to establish. Um, and our hand, right, we have six ink and we have a Merlin Rabbit and a Maleficent that we're going to be able to draw two off of, um, which will get us two extra lore with the Jafar. Um, and we're, we're fishing for a whole new world, right? And this is what's kind of interesting with this deck because you might think, well, the draws, you don't want to overdraw your hand because of a whole new world because you're going to dump your hand, but you need to draw cards in order to see the whole new world, right? Um, the opponent opts to just establish another location here um, and move their Pluto to it. So that costs a total of five ink, four for the location, one for the move. So they will draw an extra card at the start of their turn if this location goes unanswered. Um, they're going to quest with the Pluto and then ink and drop another bodyguard, ink a snake, and the Simba. Um, but again, I can choose which bodyguard I want to take out here, right? So I can still run both of my cards into the uh, Pluto, but I get a little greedy here. So I'm looking at my hand and I'm like, okay, this friend is interesting. I can draw a total of four cards here. Um, so the best option might be to sing the friends because I'm looking at my opponent. Okay, he's going to gain three lore at the start of the next turn, two. So he's going to go up to 18. If he has a go, he has or a go and a bounce. He has game. I'm going to sing friends with the Jafar, which since I draw after it's exerted to sing, I, I gain two lore off of it. Um, I draw into another illusionist and a Tiana. So, okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ink this Benja now and then drop a rabbit and see what I draw off of this, which will gain me a lore. And there it is. There's the whole new world. We drop a Maleficent to draw another card. Um, <laughs> and then we just end up ending the game with this whole new world here. So, and we draw into another whole new world. Oh, and another one. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, that's how powerful this deck is. Um, turn seven, close out the game, double whole new world. The opponent gives me the well played knowing that it's over. Um, and I'm trying to give them the well played as well. But if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more. Thank you for watching. Quantum is out.